Good evening. My name is Mark Anielski. I'm the author of the best-selling book, The Economics of Happiness, which won two awards, a gold medal in the conscious business category and a bronze medal in the category of economics, one in New York and one in Los Angeles. My new book, called An Economy of Well-Being, is a sequel to the first book, which was published in 2007, just before the crash of 2008. Some people thought I was clairvoyant, that I saw that the demise of the U.S. economy was at hand, particularly with the rising levels of debt and unsustainable levels of debt. I simply argued that the system of debt money is itself unsustainable and that if we don't solve this problem and come up with creative solutions, we would come to another and even larger crisis, which I think we're about to face and enter in spite of rising economic prosperity in some nations. We have an unsustainable level of debt, which cannot be resolved without some heroic new models for finance and for investment, particularly in the realm of merchant banking, investment banking, and national or central banking policy. But let's get back to the subject of well-being. Why did I write this book, An Economy of Well-Being? It was to basically provide practical tools, common sense tools, as I call it, for uh, building this new economy based on the idea that well-being is the central organizing principle of an economy, of a business, and, and of our lives. Why well-being? Well, because the word wealth comes from the Old English, meaning the conditions of well-being. If wealth means the conditions of well-being, I argue, then the economy, which means a household stewardship or household management, can align with this notion of well-being, that well-being is the highest desired aspiration of human beings. Well-being is also the root of the word happiness in Greek, oidaimonia, which means well-being of the spirit, well-being of your soul. So there's a fundamental, nice alignment between happiness and material well-being, as well as mental, physical, and emotional well-being. This model that I've developed is based in 500 years of traditional accounting, preparation of balance sheets, doing inventories, measuring what matters for well-being, measure the condition of the assets which make up a community, which make up an individual household or business. These assets include our human capital, our relationships, which are, constitute social capital, and trust, which are arguably assets, but don't find themselves on balance sheets, either of companies or of nations. And particularly natural capital or natural resources in the environment. These things are taken for granted sometimes and ignored in our national accounts, even if they degrade and they currently are causing us some grief in terms of the climate change impacts. So we have to take seriously that a new accounting paradigm is not only necessary, I think it's, it's critical that we begin to measure what matters to the society's conditions of well-being. And we can do that based on the, on the foundations of positive psychology, which have now argued that, in fact, there is a science of well-being. There are some known determinants of what make people happy including strong social networks and relationships and trust. And of course, a healthy environment is critical to our flourishing of economies and our ability for economies to continue to function. Without nature, we would all be dead. So this idea of well-being is founded on the laws of nature and even this notion of the laws of love, which go back to ancient times. I think it's an exciting time for the world. Maybe for some it feels like a dark time, but for me it's a hopeful time where we have uh, a new shift in consciousness and a rising level of awareness. We have rising uh, economies like China, and we have, of course, the long-standing positive model of Singapore, which has given us a remarkable uh, hope in, in the realm of public housing and, and focus on communal assets and the sharing of these assets, gr grounded or rooted in some Christian values uh, we have the, the Buddhist values that are sustaining the Gross National Happiness Initiative in Bhutan. And we have the Xiao Kang uh, well-being economy model in China, which has been the foundation of the Chinese economic system since 1989, which I've had the pleasure of working on when I advised the Chinese government uh, between 2003 and six. So measuring well-being is not just a flaky thing, and it can be done practically measuring our subjective well-being in terms of how we feel about our, our happiness and our quality of life, how we experience well-being, we can report that individually and then collectively celebrate 
the, the those conditions as well as manage them in terms of understanding how well-being is distributed in our communities. I'm looking forward to meeting some of you and having a, a very lively debate about practical things we can do on Monday to incorporate a well-being accounting and measurement system in our, in the workplace, in our families, in in our communities, in our nations, and we can hopefully chart a new future, a new economic paradigm, not seen probably since Adam Smith wrote The Wealth of Nations. That this is a new economic and paradigm that I'm arguing is a fundamental seismic shift that includes everything from changing the way we create money and how money is aligned to the assets of a nation, to the well-being conditions of a nation, rather than simply expanding the economy with more growth, more materialism. There's nothing wrong with money, but if it's based on an unsustainable amount of debt, then we, we're all the worse off. And I could show you how uh, that system is currently robbing us, creating kind of debt, indentured servitude and slavery, a modern form of slavery, and most of us don't see it. So I'm excited to um, present and discuss some of these ideas. I think they're, they'll give you new energy in life uh, and some ideas that you can practically implement in uh, in your home, in your in your business, and in Singapore as a community. I look forward to seeing you and see you soon. Thanks so much. Have a great night.